Hi DIYers, Joe here from Alarm Grid, and today we're going to talk about why you may have a trouble condition on your 5800C2W. Now, the 5800C2W can be kind of confusing with its trouble conditions for one reason, and that's that the trouble condition is going to show up on your panel as the lowest calibrated zone from your C2W. So as you can see on our C2W, we have the first zone shunted with a 2.2K resistor. Let's say I program this into my system as the front door. If I do something to the C2W, such as take the cover off of it, like I've just done, that will show zone one front door tamper. Now, if you have a wired contact connected to this, you may get confused because it's like, wait a minute, there's no tamper on my wired contact. What's going on here? It's actually telling you that the C2W itself has the tamper condition. Now, this is going to go the same for any of the other trouble conditions on your 5800C2W other than the supervision. Supervision is actually going to show on all of the program zones from the C2W in your alarm system. The other trouble conditions, though, tamper, uh, DC power loss, or low battery, those will actually show on the first or the lowest calibrated zone on your C2W. So if we did have a low battery condition, which it looks like we do have, that will also show front door low battery. You have a DC power loss that's going to show front door DC power loss or something of the sort. Those trouble conditions will reflect though based on what you have programmed as that lowest calibrated zone. And it can get kind of confusing if you don't know what to look for. But let's say you go to your system, you have a touchscreen system, you have the 5800C2W programmed into it, and it says front door tamper, zone one front door tamper, or zone whatever front door tamper. What you can do is head over to your 5800C2W and you can actually use the LEDs that are on the board to better diagnose and help figure out what's actually going on with the unit. As you can see, there's a bank of four LEDs right up here on the top. The first one has to do with the calibration of the unit. If it's green, it means that the unit is calibrated. If it's red, it means that the unit is in need of calibration. The second one has to do with the main power uh, connection to the 5800C2W. If it's green, it means that the transformer is connected and it's getting that 15.5 volts of DC power. If it's red, it means that it, it doesn't see its transformer or the power connection has been damaged or there's something going on uh, with, that, with that connection. If you do see that, you'll want to check the wiring for your power connection to the C2W. You're also going to want to head to the transformer, make sure it's plugged in, and make sure that the wiring isn't falling off of the terminals on the back of it. The third light has to do with the battery condition. And as you can see, because it's yellow, it is showing us that our battery is low. But because we do have our DC power connection, it's actually charging the battery currently. That light is super convenient because you can see it through the with the cover on. As you can see, there's a little window right here that'll show that light if it's illuminated. If it's off, it means that everything is all set. If it's yellow, it means that the battery is either low or that the device has disconnected it entirely. The battery gets to 11.2 volt DC. It's gonna show a low battery, or it's gonna, it's gonna, the, the light's gonna illuminate and the system will get a low battery condition. That battery drops to 10 volts DC or below. The device is gonna disconnect it from the unit entirely. The fourth light on the bay that has to do with the RF uh, communication. As you can see, let's say I remove this leg of the resistor. That's going to flash and it's going to show that the 5800C2W is actually signaling. Now, when you're troubleshooting the 5800C2W, there's a couple things to keep in mind and there's a couple tricks that you can use. When you go to calibrate the unit, the 5800C2W is only going to recognize zones that have a resistor attached to it and that are closed. So let's say you did a panel swap and you took a whole bunch of zones and you attached it to the 1500C2W and you left some of the windows open that those zones are attached to. When you go to calibrate the unit, the 1500 isn't going to see those zones because they're open. And when you go to program them into your system, you may get frustrated because it's not going to learn them in when you go to open and close them. And even if you manually program in the serial number, they're still not going to work properly. So when you do attach any zones to the 5800C2W, before you do your calibration, just make sure that all those zones are closed. Another thing to keep in mind is that the trouble condition, as I said before, is going to show up on the lowest calibrated zone. So let's say you added zones to the 5800C2W and the trouble condition comes in on zone number two, it, assuming that you program them in manually just entering the serial number. 
say, wait a minute, what's going on? Why isn't my front door showing uh, that trouble condition even though it's attached to zone one? It must be because either the resistor wasn't attached correctly, or wasn't the proper uh, resistance level on the resistor, or that the front door was actually open when you, when you did your calibration. One way to avoid that is before you do your swap of a panel, uh, taking all the zones from that panel and putting them on the C2W, keep your existing panel on, go around the house and make sure that all the zones work, that they're all showing up in the keypad, label all of your wires and make sure that they're all closed. This will save you a big headache in the future when you go to program this into your actual alarm system. That's how to diagnose some of the trouble conditions on a 5800C2W. If you do have any questions about this, feel free to email us at support at alarmgrid.com. Head over to our website, www.alarmgrid.com, or give us a call at 888-818-7728. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to be notified when we post future videos, hit the notification button below, and we'll send you an update when we do so. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.